Hello everybody, uh, today I'm going to be giving a lightning talk on Nomad for Students. And so a little bit about myself, my name is Forrest, I'm a student in Ottawa um, at Carleton University. Uh, I'm a Rust station so I like writing Rust code and I, I really like Nomad. And so a little bit about the, the context of this talk. Um, I've been using Nomad at Carleton for several months now to deploy a few applications and I want to take a look through what this process looks like, um, but more from the student's perspective. And so a few tech specs of what we have. We have three server VMs going. Um, we have three client VMs that are strong enough. Uh, lots of like a 32 vCPU, 64 gigs of RAM. So not a massive deployment, but we can, we can deploy quite a few projects on it. Uh, we have one ingress IP and we have definitely less than 100% uptime. That's not the end of the world for us. Uh, when, when I look through Nomad documentation and it says, this is not recommended for production environments, I'm like, hmm, but we're not a production environment. And so um, from the student's perspective, students have projects a lot of the time, right? Like if, if they're doing something for a resume or if they just want to try something that's, that's pretty cool, oftentimes they'll be doing some type of web project or something that will need some type of backend deployment or front-end deployment or whatever. And so this is sort of what the objective of our Nomad cluster is, is being able to give students the, the ability to, to do this. Um, but, but from a student's perspective who's just come in and just done their first um, Ruby on Rails tutorial or React tutorial, and they want to get something deployed, they're going to hear um, quite a lot of things uh, when, when, once they get started in the deployment world. And so one of the, the obviously like the biggest things we're going to hear is like, what, what's this cloud thing, right? And so like the cloud can sort of be generalized as just a lot of computers that are somewhere else and you can connect to them and you can run stuff on them. Um, but that, that's really what they are. And then, I mean, the next step that you would take once you go down this rabbit hole a little bit is like this idea of cloud native. What's cloud native? Well, um, it's sort of like a lot of services that are running together, but the cloud native is also like a lot of levels of subtraction on top of that, right? Like we, we want to be able to um, reason about a lot of these services. How are they being run? How are they being started? How are they connecting to one another? And so there's a massive world of things under the umbrella of cloud native, um, but it's, it's really about like the art of uh, running services in, like at, at bulk. And so, uh, of course, like the next thing that students are going to hear about um, when they when they go down this path of looking to deploy and finding the um, sort of like largest way, like the most popular way to do this, they're they're going to hear about Kubernetes. Um, hopefully, they hear about Docker first. But let's say that like they're going to hear about Kubernetes somewhere. And so um, the, the thing for myself is when, when I got started learning about a lot of this, this world of um, cloud native and this world of deployment, um, it, it seemed to me like Kubernetes is really the only option that I had um, like to, to be able to use. And so I think that for myself, I really started by going out and looking in the Kubernetes community and seeing that there's like a lot to not just do with like production usage, but home lab usage and side projects and a, a lot in the world of Kubernetes. Um, and so th this is like a really great thing to see. There's like a massive community, so many people using it. Uh, it's used at these big companies. But then as soon as you start going down the rabbit hole of trying to learn it yourself, there's a lot you have to do. There's a lot of configuration um, to set up your, your, your first cluster. There's a lot of terms that you have to understand, even for like the most basic deployments. Um, and if you have, if you want to have any production environment at all, you have there's there's a long list of steps that you have to go through, um, from installing Kubernetes on your your machine um, or on your cluster to being able to provision certificates to having uh, different like control planes and all all of this stuff. And from the outside, you can go and watch a lot of tutorials, but there there's a there's a lot to do. And so this is what brought me to Nomad is that I was looking for other alternatives out there and I wanted to find a term for that thing. Like I, I just want something to run run my uh, my services. I, I have my Docker containers. I, I really like using Docker Compose on my one computer, but when I want to deploy, I, I need, what, what, what is it what is it that I need to be able to run these services? And so the word I was looking for was orchestrator. And there's really not a ton of options out there for orchestrators. Um, but in looking around, I found Nomad. And um, this was sort of my entry into the, uh, the HashiCorp world where I then found a lot of the other products that are available as well. And so um, essentially like for me, the, the, the biggest things I found really nice about it was that it was just like a refreshing exit of like this, like all of this terminology that I didn't want to know right off the bat. Um, it gave me a single binary that I was able to start running some applications with in some simple dev mode and a single purpose. And so I don't necessarily have to consider all of the, um, the, the things that I have to do to get this one thing running. 
Um, instead, I can just say, okay, well, I'm going to start by running one service and it ran. I'm like, oh, okay, that's, that's pretty cool. And let's just try a little bit more and a little bit more. And then, of course, that leads you down the path of uh, a lot of different uh, tools that can that can work together. But the the very core principle of orchestration is uh, is what it focuses on. And so um, at Carlton, we run several projects um, out of out of our our Nomad cluster. And so uh, these stem from projects that students have started um, with the uh, like something that a student has made for students to use. Um, but it, we also have a few other services running here and there um, to help either with some um, introspection into the cluster or some just back and stuff or anything like that. And so. We also keep all of our code uh, open source. And so the idea behind this is we want students to be able to come and learn um, how stuff is done and then be able to, to sort of enter this world of um, becoming their own uh, SRE. Uh, like, like people can go and set this up themselves. Um, so just a quick overview of the sites that we have that are running. So this one right here, discretemath.ca, uh, was created by students who wanted to help I uh, create practice problems for the second year discrete math course. And so this is one that a lot of students struggle with. And so um, this site just has previous midterms that the professors have posted all aggregated together. Um, and you can go in and do questions. And so students saw this problem, students created an application to solve this problem and then needed some way to host it. So we, we have university infrastructure and this is sort of where I, I bridge the gap. Is that like you, you I mean, you know, if we take a look at like what's uh, what's being run here, we have the back and the front end and Postgres and you can run that on a virtual machine just by itself. But then as you start scaling and as you start adding more potentially uh, microservices or um, you want to build a second project or something, then there, there's a lot of technical burden that can that can come up down the road. So um, this, the second product we have is called Merged, and this is a way to show off um, projects that, or uh, events that are being run at the university by the different technical clubs. And so I can see the events, I can see when they are, um, and I can see, if, if I click on it, it will bring me to the website um, that, that is relevant to. So um, I just want to take a look here quickly at some of the, the the code that comes along with this, or rather is used to deploy this. And kind of just, I mean, if, if you know Nomad, this is really not nothing special. Um, we we're using traffic as our ingress, uh, or our reverse proxy, rather. Uh, we're using connect to connect the backend in the database. Um, but what I want to bring attention to is for a student who doesn't know very much about at all about the deployment world, um, if they were to take this template that is used for merged and then just duplicate it and start working on swapping out the Docker image that's used and um, the host name that traffic is looking for, then there's really not that much overhead um, to, to getting something running on the cluster. Of course, there are a few things that would be a little bit different, like this idea of like a service mesh and connecting ports um, that are running across different clients. There's a little bit of stuff there, but in comparison to the like the, the tidal wave of information that I had to try and, and set up to configure some um, some Kubernetes uh, services, this definitely feels a lot a, a lot um, easier to me and a lot more approachable, especially from students who are just entering this world and trying to teach themselves. All right, and so um, with this setup that we have, so we're running a Nomad at the university right now. This is giving us the um, ability to run products that students are creating. And the, the question that comes up is like, well, can any student use this? If any student makes their own project, are, are they able to, to make use of this technology themselves? And uh, we definitely hope that the answer is yes. And, and we want um, really for this project to be able to help improve the cloud native literacy for students. So when students are coming into a lot of these ideas, um, how, they're, how are they approaching it and uh, what, what are they able to do to learn it? And so in the future, we're hoping that we can really expand this out as an ecosystem to be able to teach students through workshops, um, get more students helping to operate their cluster in a safe way, um, but then also offering this as a service to other clubs and societies who have their websites that are being hosted in different places and being able to uh, just keep it within Carleton. And so that's it for my lightning talk. Um, you can reach out to me on GitHub, Twitter. I also run a um, separate from HashiCorp community discord where I try to encourage people to come and uh, talk about projects that they're working on and help learn together. Um, please do reach out to me on uh, and anywhere you'd like to, to, to ask more questions. And I do hope that I can uh, come back for a longer form talk sometime in the future with uh, with some cool stuff. Thank you very much.